Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I just got a load of new motherboards in, and I was just testing them, just going through the usual stuff. And I had this one, which was showing a CPU light, and no no boot, nothing on the screen or anything. And uh, I've done all the usual steps that I've shown before on my channel. BIOS flash, I've cleaned the RAM slots, cleaned everything, and uh, you know CMOS reset, whatever, I've done everything. And nothing was working, basically. But then I got my infrared camera out, just to have a look to see if anything was heating up too much or, or whatever and I saw something very interesting so I stopped while I was doing started recording and I'm now going to show you what I can see first I'll just show you I'll power the board on and yeah you can see the CPU light up there and it just stays on this and it doesn't boot or anything so I will go on my infrared camera and I'll show you what I can see and why it's so interesting Okay, so we're on the infrared cam right now, and right now the board is off, and just now I've switched on the board power, and you can see some stuff start, start to heat up already, so there, I'm not sure what exactly that chip is, but there's always, this always heats up before, like, before you power the board on, and then when you power the board on it'll cool down, I'm assuming it's just handling, like, some of the, the th like, 3 VSB, 5 VSB stuff, and, and all that, so this is all normal, this is fine, you can see this is only going up to, like, 34 degrees right now. So that's not something we need to worry about. But if I now power the board on, you will see a very different spot heating up up here. Right now it says only 40 degrees, but if I go closer with the camera, you can see that is going up to about almost 100 degrees Celsius. Just next to the RAM slots here, under this big inductor. Yeah, 110 degrees, so I'm going to switch the board off now. I don't want anything to, to break too bad. And I'm just going to switch it on again in a second, just so we can have a closer view. You can see the the big inductor, the, the square, and then there's two capacitors underneath it. And one of those capacitors, or maybe both, but I think just one, you can see that's heating up crazy hot right now. So I'm going to switch the board back off and go back to my other camera. So yeah, this is the area that we're looking at here. This is the inductor, and then one of these two capacitors is heating up. And I'm just going to show you them now on a board view. This is the inductor that we were looking at. And it's one of these two. They're connected to VPP25. But the issue is, I don't know which one it is. It's kind of hard to tell on the infrared camera, just because the quality is so bad. Like, it could be the big one. I think it's probably the big one, but it could be the little one underneath. And there is actually a way to find out. But first... I'm just going to show you what's going on. So the reason the capacitor is heating up is because I'm guessing it's shorted to ground because you can see on the board view they're connected directly to ground through these capacitors here. So one or both, but probably one of these capacitors is shorted, which is um, honestly pretty common on well on boards that are faulty a lot. Like pretty often you get shorted capacitors. So this this side is ground here. You can see I'm testing, I'm putting my ground on the outside of the USB slots. This is a ground. You can also put it on like screw holes or into one of the ground pins on, on CPU or, or 24 pin. But this is just easiest. And I'm just measuring to the right side of this capacitor that we were looking at. And you can see it is less than an ohm. So that is, well, obviously, yeah, that, that's connected to ground. And now if I measure on the other side, so the side that's meant to be VPP25, if I measure the other side right now, that is also the exact same value, less than an ohm, which is definitely not what you would be seeing. But the thing is, we see that on both capacitors, they're both half an ohm. So this signal is definitely shorter to ground, same on the bottom of the inductor here, same signal. And yeah, but we don't know which capacitor is the one that's actually shorter to ground. But I think I have a way to find out which. I'm going to use my micros well, microscope camera. I'm just going to try and point it at the area that we're looking at. And then hopefully I'll be able to show you what I'm doing. And yeah, so basically I'm going to be using this IPA solvent because it evaporates very quickly at like low temperatures. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the board on. I'm going to spray some of the solvent down there. Just, yeah, there you go, you can see it all like soaking around the around the capacitors. 
and then I'm just going to power the board on and yeah immediately you can see the top capacitor is just all evaporating away from the top capacitor like the bottom one you can see it's got like a bubble of the IPA around it still but if I turn the power back on you know that will stay there but around the top capacitor it just disappears so that's the one that's heating up to 100 degrees over 100 degrees and that is the one that's shorted so that's what we're going to be removing now but first before I remove it I would like to find a replacement one that we're going to be using instead of this and I can see the value of it here so it's 22 U so 22 microfarads and that's probably 6.3 volts is what I'm guessing what that means that's a very common capacitor value that you see on motherboards and basically all I'm going to do is just go onto my donor board so yeah this gigabyte Z390UD is the board that I usually use as a donor board with these kinds of components and basically I'm just going to look around just click on random components that look the same sort of size oh there we go 22 microfarad capacitor 6.3 volts uh, we didn't get any other information oh I think it said 6 as well on the other one so this is probably the exact same thing as there as we're going to be as we're going to be trying to use in the other on the other board okay so my hot air gun is heating up right now and I've got my little microscope pointed at the capacitors that we need to remove just here next to this chip that we saw on the board view and basically I'm just going to start warming them up taking them off shouldn't take too long but getting them back on again after on the other board might take a little bit longer but Honestly, I'd much rather use hot air than a uh, soldering iron. I've been trying to use a soldering iron for this kind of stuff recently. And like, yeah, the bigger the component, the easier it is. And these are, these are pretty big as far as capacitors go. But still, I'd rather just cover up the regular big capacitors with like aluminium foil and then use this. Because that's the only real risk. Like you could blow up the like big capacitors. But... Yeah, I would just much rather use hot air. Like, every time I use a soldering iron, well, about like half the time, I just end up messing the board up. So, I think uh, I'm just going to stick with hot air, to be honest. Or at least for, for like, these, like, uh, surface mount components. There we go. Yeah, it's just come straight off. So, now I'm going to put my hot air gun back. and put this in a safe place because I'm not gonna lie half the time I do this I put the capacitor somewhere and then I lose it I either forget where it's gone or I knock it off the table and I have to do it all over again so I'm gonna put this in I'm just gonna put it inside my little uh, CPU holder just so I don't lose it for sure okay and now I'm just gonna protect this with my very specialist equipment that's basically just a uh, PCIe slot cover, like one of these, literally, just wrapped in aluminium foil. But it honestly works wonders. It does so well for protecting these little capacitors here. So I'm going to put one like that sideways, just wrap it around. And then maybe just another one here as well. I did a, a GPU repair recently, actually, and I'm going to be doing another one today. Uh, where these came in very handy because the DR MOSFETs that short themselves out very often on GPUs, like literally half the time, that's the problem. Um, they are right next to like a whole lane of capacitors, so you really just need to put them all under this and then you can get the MOSFET off without blowing any of the capacitors up. The first time I tried that, I blew a bunch of capacitors up. So yeah, try and avoid that if you can. I'm going to get the camera into position. Hopefully, this is enough. Okay, now I'm going to move it back a bit. I've already melted my camera a little bit because I got a little bit too close when I was filming once. And it melted some of it, but yeah. Okay, so replacement capacitor at the ready on top of my uh, power supply. And I'm just going to start heating this one up. You can actually see on the on the microscope that that you, you can see the capacitors chipped on the sort of bottom side from your point of view so well that does not smell very good yeah see this is the issue we're right next to the ram slots and the plastic 
will start melting at some point. So I need to I need to rotate this round and get this done quickly. Oh, that does not smell good. Um, honestly, maybe I should have put the the aluminium on the actual slots. Hang on. Okay, so I've just put some aluminium foil. Oh, you can't see anything. Hang on. I've just put some more aluminium foil on the RAM slots. Hopefully they're, they're not going to be burning up now. Not the best view in the microscope, but at least you can somewhat see it. And yeah, now I'm just going to start heating up this resistor, this uh, capacitor quite rapidly, hopefully. That is hot. And it should come off soon. I've also just put a little bit of flux on, as you can see. Should just melt, yeah, pretty much straight away as soon as I put the heat on. It just seems to help a bit with uh, getting the new component on. A lot of fumes coming off right now, though. There we go. Okay, it's off. Finally. Uh, yeah, just dump that anywhere. Keep heating the board. I might put a little bit more flux on. Hopefully this doesn't just blow away immediately. Try and maneuver it into place roughly. Hopefully as it as it gets soldered on, it will just go into place by itself. Okay, that might be enough. I'm just gonna let it cool down for a second. And then I'm just going to try and move it with the tweezers and see if it stays stuck. And then I'm going to check the big capacitors that are around it to make sure none of them have popped. Because that would be quite unfortunate if they have. Okay, nice. That's on. Okay. I'm back. And I think I'm done. Uh, basically, just to update you. After I finished with the hot air, I tried using the my soldering iron to solder it on, which didn't work because it just came off. I thought it would be soldered enough on with the heat gun that it wouldn't do that, but unfortunately it did. So then I, I tried using the soldering iron to get it on, uh, which took a little while. And in the end, the left side of the capacitor, so the bit that's connected to VPP25, wasn't actually connected it was uh, lifted a little bit up, up off the pad so um yeah when i was testing it like i, I was testing to see whether the, it was actually connected to the other areas so like like these you know this capacitor uh let me get it on the right mode I should be able to hear the beep so like on this capacitor on the bottom one yeah, you can hear the beep when I'm testing it, because it's connected. On the top one, it didn't beep, because it wasn't connected. So then I got the hot air back out, did that again, just to melt it. You know, like, I was just pushing down on it while it was melting, and eventually it went down. And now, it is also connected. Oh, there you go. Hopefully you can hear that beep, but... Where is it? There we go. And, yeah, it is actually connected to the, to the rest of the signal. But the question is now, so this side still at ground, perfect. I'm going to switch into resistance mode. This side, zero ohms, because this is the ground side. And this side, kilo ohms and rising, 1.3 kilo ohms. So it looks, oh, it looks to be okay. But well, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me turn the microscope off. And let's see if that's actually helped anything, because, yeah, well, maybe that wasn't the only issue, for example. Maybe there were other issues as well that uh, we haven't discovered yet. So let's get the CPU back in. How hot is everything? Oh, it's okay, it's cooled down. Yeah, and you always want to wait for the board to cool back down before taking resistance measurements or anything, because otherwise they will just be wrong. Like, recently I was doing a, a GPU 
and yeah, uh, I got a DR MOSFET out, a DR MOS out, and uh, measured the resistance, and it looked like it was still short. I waited two minutes for the board to cool down, measured again, and it was fine. So uh, yeah, CPU cooler. I'm not gonna screw it in or anything. I'm just gonna place it on top. That should be more than enough. And let's see if it will power on now. CPU light. Oh, and CPU light is off. DRAM flashing. I have seen this before. I've got like four or five of these boards and they all have that behavior where they just sort of like flash on, flash off with some of the lights. VGA, yeah, and I'm expecting a picture any second now. Maybe you can see it if I bring the monitor in. My monitor's on, but I'm not seeing anything yet. There we go. And we are booting. So, um, I'm going to run some tests and check all the RAM slots and everything like I usually would. Can you see that? Yes, you can. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, that looks like that was the issue. It was that capacitor that had shorted itself out. Where is it? Where have I put it? Oh, here it is. Right here, this little thing. Maybe you can see that in the camera. No, it doesn't really want to focus. Okay, well, anyway, here it is, shorted capacitor, and in the bin it goes. So, yeah, I'm happy that this is now working, but like I said, I'm just going to test everything. I'm sure it'll be fine, though, because, I don't, well, I don't see why it wouldn't be after we've replaced the issue that was stopping it from booting. Um, and, yeah, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I've also just got a component that I needed for a GPU repair. I did my first GPU repair a few days ago, the one that I keep going on about. And I started my second one, which had a similar issue. But I only had one uh, little DRMOS. So that went on the first one. And I'm going to just finish the second one after I finish this video, after I finish my testing. And I think I'll record that as well. I've just... Just like, just like with this board, I'm just going to catch you up on what I've done so far, how I diagnosed the issue, and then I will try to replace the, the Diamos, which honestly is a lot harder than this. But uh, yeah, hopefully I'll get that done. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. hope you learned something. Infrared cameras, very useful. Best £150 or however much it was that I've spent. It has solved quite a few issues for me. Like, if, if I didn't have it, I don't really know how else I would have found that unless I was just going around with my multimeter testing random points. So I guess you could find it another way. Or I've also heard that some people, if they don't have an infrared camera, they will literally just do what I did with the IPA. Just spray it on like random points and see see like what heats up quickly. But I don't think that's very efficient. You're just gonna soak your board in IPA. So I would not recommend that. I would just recommend getting an infrared camera if this is the kind of thing that you're looking at doing. And uh, yeah, I, I guess that's it for today. Hopefully I can upload this soon and get started with the GPU. It is going to be, I'll show it to you. It is this uh, 3060 12 gigabyte model from, well, it, it's I think it's Predator. That's Predator, right? So I think this is from a pre-built. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say anything anyway just as 3060 but yeah uh the one that i fixed before was a 3060 ti so very similar also very very small pcb the pcb is only that much then the rest of it is just heat sink but yeah i'm going to be taking this apart soon and hopefully fixing it because uh, i do want to get into gpu repairs but yeah uh that is it for now and i'll see you in the next one bye